In times like these, we realize how little control we really have. There's lots of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry about the situation with the coronavirus and what the outcome is going to be of that. But as a Christian, should we ever worry? Should we have doubts about the situation? In Matthew 14, 24 through 33, Matthew 14, 24 through 33, it says, But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. In this situation, the disciples were on a boat. Many of them were fishermen, and they were afraid at the situation that they had with the water. There was waves, and it was very windy. They were scared, and there was an aspect of doubt there. You know, they were worrying. And, you know, fear is really a natural reaction that God has given us to really protect us. You think about it, if we didn't have any fear, we would do some very dumb things at times. So it really it makes us cautious in our decisions. So worry and doubt is not necessarily a bad thing in itself, but we have to realize it has been clouded by our fallen nature. So we don't always understand things correctly and we don't respond in the right way. It's been clouded by the aspect of sin. And you know, whenever we don't really have all the information, it can be even worse of how our worry or doubt comes across. You know, whenever the disciples were there with the waves and they saw Jesus coming to them, how did they respond? Not knowing the full situation, they said, it is a ghost. They were worried about what was going on. And, you know, right now with the coronavirus, we don't have all the answers. We don't know when this is all going to be resolved or anything in that way. And we might be crying out in that way of, it is a ghost, because we don't have the, all the information. So we have a worry and we have doubt. But I love verse 27 here. So after they cried out that, it says, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. In other words, don't fear. Jesus is here. And this is the same thing for us as Christians. But this situation is we do not need to fear because Jesus is here. He is in control. And, you know, do we really trust that God is in control? Or are we just giving him lip service with our lives? You know, I see here that, that Peter did have an aspect of trust. And it wasn't just lip service, because when he called out Jesus, he said, If it is you, Lord, bid me to come to you. Let me step out on the water as well. And he did that. He responded to him. So he had, took an, a leap of faith, an aspect of stepping out of the boat there. But you see, Peter used wisdom. And we need to use wisdom as well, because Peter didn't just jump out of the boat without seeing Jesus. He knew what was going to happen. He would sink down because people don't normally walk on water there. So we need to use wisdom as Christians as well. So you see many of the churches are canceling their services, and I think for very good reason. You know, maybe there's ways uh, that we can work around those things. And sometimes well, with the coronavirus, we're not supposed to be getting groups together of uh, 10 or more right now. And that really hurts how church is supposed to operate. So, you know, in wisdom, these pastors have been making decisions about what to do. In wisdom, our government leaders are trying to make decisions. They're not just stepping right out of the boat. But, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, as it says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. But he's given us a power in love and that we can have sound judgment. So, not the spirit of fear, you know, the worry or the doubt, but help us to have sound judgment, sound mind about the decisions that we make here with this coronavirus. So, Part of the sound decision is making sure that you're taking proper precautions, washing your hands, wearing masks when it's appropriate, getting treatment when it's appropriate, and being careful of where you're going, that social um, distancing, basically, right now. But I want you to understand, too, here that, that Jesus is in control and who, how God's power is. So whenever Jesus told him, he told Peter, he said in verse 29, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Jesus wasn't the only one walking on the water. It was also Peter. And you see, Peter had a peace when he was looking at Jesus and stepped out there. He was able to walk in the water despite all these waves and this wind that was going on at the time. And in Philippians 4 and 6 and 
uh, through 7, it talks about having peace that passes all understanding. You see, that peace is beyond the situation because those waves and that wind was still going on as Peter walked out there. And, you know, that peace that we're going to have is not going to be peace of this world, but peace knowing that God is in control. And as us as Christians, as we walk into this storm of this coronavirus, we look upon God, we understand that he is in control. We can have that peace that passes all understanding there. And you know, I was thinking about this account here. So the beginning of it, Peter had to make a leap of faith to step out of the boat. And as Christians, that's the first step for us is salvation, is taking that leap of faith and understanding that cannot save myself that what Christ has done on the cross for me is the only way for me to go to heaven there and taking that leap of faith to step out of the boat in the first place but those that have not accepted Christ those that were, are without God they have everything to fear everything to fear if you step out of that boat you are going to sink there if you your worldview doesn't allow God then there's really just no purpose for the situation that's going on you have everything to fear it's all random but we know from God's word that it's not random, that God does have a purpose in it. And in verse 30 there, after Peter had gotten out, so he took that first step of faith and he was trusting God to be saved, right? As us, we're trusting God to be saved, but now we got to walk with God. Look at verse 30. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. So he looked at that boisterous wind. We look at the news. We look at the situation with jobs. Maybe we've lost our own jobs. Where are our financial situation? What's going to happen next there? We're looking at all these wind and all these waves and the sickness that's out there. We start to sink. Maybe we've accepted Christ. We've taken that step out of the boat, but now we're walking with him and we're starting to sink because we're having doubts. We are worrying about the situation. But I want you to see the aspect of Peter's faith here as he said, Lord, save me. So maybe right now you are afraid. Maybe you are having doubts. Maybe you are worrying about the situation. But have you called out and saying, Lord, save me. Save me from this situation. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, it also talks about being anxious for nothing. Don't worry. Matthew 6, 25 through 33 tells us that God, we shouldn't worry because God knows our needs. He's in control. And you see, as Peter was sinking there and he cried out, Lord, help me right there. Jesus grabbed Peter. Peter didn't drown. And God is right here with us. God is not far away from us in this situation. As we go through these trials of the coronavirus, he's right there to reach out when we have struggling faith, when we have doubts and worries there. And you see, Jesus rebuked Peter when he pulled him out. He said, oh, you of little faith. At least four times in Matthew, we see that Jesus rebukes his disciple in a similar manner of saying that you had a little faith or the unbelief was your problem there. And you know, can it be a sin to worry as a Christian? Certainly it can be a sin. You need to be careful about that. In James 1 and 6, James talks about that whenever we pray, we shouldn't have doubt. Because if we have doubt when we're praying, we're basically like those waves that are being pushed back and forth by the wind. And as Christians, if we have doubt and worry in this situation, the coronavirus, everything from the media, everything from the government, everything from all the stuff that we're being inundated with is going to be that wind. And we're just going to be like those waves going back and forth with everything. But no, when we pray, when we're praying for wisdom there, we should not have that doubt. Because you realize if you do have that doubt, you're not going to get any wisdom. If you have worry, you're going to go and buy all the toilet paper in Walmart. You're going to go and make some very unwise decisions in that. We need to trust God and everything is going out. So is this worry, is this doubt, is it the opposite of faith? You may have heard that statement before that, a doubt is the opposite of faith. I really think that what's the opposite of worry and doubt is prayer. This is why. Because when we pray, we are confronting that worry and doubt head on. That is the opposite of worry and doubt is prayer because it's confronting it. In prayer, we're to seek God. And that's where that peace that passes all understanding beyond the situation comes is when we pray. When we focus on God. And you see, the reason that Peter started to sink was because he wasn't focusing on Jesus anymore. When he first got out of the boat, he was looking towards Jesus. But when he looked around and he saw that the wind was boisterous, he saw these waves coming in on him, that's when he started to sink, when he had that doubt and that worry. We need to confront this doubt and worry head on with prayer. And we won't sink there. And you realize he was rebuked for having little faith. But realize that even with little faith, nothing's impossible. Matthew 17 and 20 says that the faith the size of mustard seed could move a mountain. 
So even though you might be worrying and doubt now, realize that that faith is still powerful, even in a little sense. But we need to understand that God is going to meet us even in the midst of our doubt. He's there to reach out when we struggle, when we trip up, when we start to sink there. He's there to reach out. But we need to focus about upon him. We need to pray. And in verse 32, after all this situation, after Peter had walked on the water, Peter had sunk, and Jesus had called him. Verse 32, they got in the boat. And it says, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. You see, when they were in the, the, the boat, the storm passed. It was over with. God's purposes had been fulfilled there and showed who Jesus was. And right now with this coronavirus, we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know what the next uh, day, next week, next month are going to look like with that. But once the purpose is accomplished, once we're back in that boat, the storm is going to pass. We need to go just like the disciples here. And when they got back in the boat and saw that Jesus had stopped the storm, it says that they came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. God the Son in the flesh deserves our worship. He is in control. And we don't need to worry. We don't need to be worried and consumed about tomorrow. Because God is going to take care of us. And I love it. First Peter 5 and 7, Peter says that we should cast all our cares upon God because he cares about us. This is Peter that wrote that. First Peter 5 7. The same Peter who had that doubt and started to sink. Cast all your cares upon God because he cares about you. So the question is, first, have you gotten out of the boat? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? Because if you haven't, you have everything to fear in this situation. Because those winds and those storms are going to take you. You're going to drown. And you're going to be separated from God forever. If you haven't sinned. Christ, are you focusing on Jesus as you walk in this storm? Or are you allowing doubt and worry to come into your life? You need to pray. You need to confront that doubt and worry head on. And it's going to be a very different situation for you. God is still watching. God is still active. God is still in control. And he has a purpose for this situation. And you don't have to worry or doubt in that. Have faith in God. Father, I thank you for your blessings and I thank you that we know that you are in control and I pray that you help us just to continue to know you better help us to continue to trust you in this situation when we don't know what's going on we hear different accounts from the news from the government from social media whatever those situations may be Lord I pray that you help us to continue to pray for wisdom and continue to confront doubts and worries head-on and help us to know you better in Jesus name we pray. amen